All right, so I thought I'd do my quick little Monza preview. I'm starting, I've started getting in the habit of watching old races uh, during off weeks because, A, I love Formula One. Um, yeah, I love Formula One, so I watch old races. Um, and I was watching last year's uh, race at Monza, and I started getting excited again because I think, for me, Formula One is not about going around circles at high speeds. I think that's what NASCAR and IRL, or IndyCar, um, that's what they do well. That's their domain. Going around in circles really fast, it's... I can understand why people enjoy it. It's, you know, cars flying around. Um, but that's not Formula One to me. Formula One is more, um, you know, high-speed corners and, um, you know, heavy braking and change of direction. Um, stuff that makes Formula One unique, um, which really is uh, high downforce and high speeds, because, um, you know, NASCAR, no no real downforce. I mean, they put wings on them. Um, and, you know, having them run in circles at 200 miles an hour requires technical feats, but nothing like an F1 car. Um, so Monza, for me, when I look at it on paper, it doesn't scream Formula One to me, um, namely because it has a bunch of high-speed straights. There are three main high-speed straights, um, and there are, you know, three chicanes where the drivers are going from, like, 200 down to, like, 50 at the first chicane. I think they go down to, like, 45 miles an hour. Um, but then you start looking at the totality of the circuit, and you realize, of course it's Formula One. This is you know, classic Formula One. I mean, where else do you have cars going from, like, 215 miles an hour on the main straight down to 50, or, you know, 190 down to 100 for Parabolica. Um, so it is cool. I, I'm starting to get more on board. I kind of have to pump myself up for Monza every year because it's easy to just kind of think, eh, kind of boring, but it's not. Um, so it'll be interesting to see us watching last year's race and remembering that um, McLaren went kind of contrary as far as the aero package goes. Most teams from Monza, because it's a high-speed track, there are uh, three main straights in which the drivers will break 200 miles an hour. I think they hit about 220 on the front straight. Um, so in order to maximize top speed, most teams run a very skinny rear wing. Uh, it's just basically there's no rear wing. It's just kind of Sitting there, it's a little slit like that. I mean, nothing big. Um, smaller than some of their front wings, it looks like. Um, but last year, McLaren went contrary. Last year, McLaren went for a big wing, a high downforce package. And their their theory, I'm guessing, uh, from what I've been able to tell, was that they'd be able to carry more speeds through the corner sections, through Parabolica and the Lesmo corners. And... It kind of worked for them. They ended up um, coming second, sandwiched in between the two Ferraris. Um, this was Button. But um, it'll be interesting to see. I'll, I'll be interested to see what the teams do on Arrow because, you know, McLaren proved that you can bring a high downforce package to Monza and make it work. Um, I think the teams are going to have the hardest times. I think Red Bull is going to struggle. This is... You know, I think this is the race every year where Red Bull really says, let's just get through Monza. Um, they will be happy with fifth and sixth place. I mean, they'll, they'll want to be on pole. They'll want to have a podium win. Um, but I think they realistically know that Monza's not their track. They are a high downforce, uh, you know, group. But they don't usually have enough uh, time to make up in those high downforce areas to compensate for their lack of top speed at Monza. So that'll be interesting. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Monza's one of the shortest races of the year. Um, it's like an hour and a half. It's a super short race. Um, they do under they do less than 50 laps. Um, I was watching old footage of uh, the lap record, Rubens Barrichello set. Um, and I started to get nostalgic. I... Did it wasn't really a huge f hugely into F one, uh, 
before they switched over to the V8s. They used to have V10s, and I now, after watching, you know, some of Ruben's race, I'm starting to understand why people are getting upset about the formula change for 2013, um... Because listening from the V10s to the V8s, there's definitely a difference. Uh, the V10s just howl a whole lot better. Um, so it'll be interesting to see... I mean, I, I support the move to the Turbo V6s, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what the, the sound dynamic is on those engines. But um, other F1 news, uh, Nick Heidfeld, who had originally looked like he was going to legally challenge losing his seat, has decided they've parted ways amicably. There may have been a settlement, maybe some money there. Um, but Nick Heidfeld is officially out at Renault, so Bruno Senna officially does have that seat. Um, Naran Karthikeyan has secured sponsorship, so he'll be racing at the um, first ever Indian Grand Prix for HRT, so that's cool for him. Um, and I think we've gotten to the point in the season, you know, it, it's been like this for four or five races where it looks like Vettel and Red Bull have the two championships sewn up. I, I really don't see what anybody can do to distract them. I mean, we have how many? Maybe seven races left. Um, you know, at 25 points apiece for a win, you know, Vettel would literally have to start just dropping out of the points, just, you know, DNFs. Um, and there have been seasons past where you get to the end of the season and reliability starts starts crumbling. I mean, I haven't checked the engine situation. They may get to a point where they're having to reuse old engines or take new ones and take grid penalties. Um, but absent sort of like their house crumbling down around them, I don't see anyone that can beat Vettel. He continues to get, you know, if he's not winning, he's getting second or third or fourth places. Um, and, you know, it, it just becomes a mathematics game. I mean... If you're getting fourth place and you've got like a hundred point spread, um, you've got a bit of a cushion. And you know he does keep regularly turning in podiums. So I think I think Vettel and Red Bull have this sewn up. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest. It's really a battle for second now. Um, in the drivers and the constructors, I think McLaren's probably comfortable in the constructors. Um, it'll be I need to check the points and see where Ferrari is. Um, I'm I'm happy that Ferrari is doing better. They had a couple of rough years there, um, but I think they're really getting back to the point where they're starting to challenge. And it'll be interesting to see. I hope Renault. I was watching some old YouTube clips of Kubica at Monza, and I started getting really pissed. I'm like, why isn't he back yet? Um, it sounds like he won't be back. May not even be back for next year. Um, recovery on his hand is taking a long time so anyways that's just, that's it for Monza um yeah crazy high speed um it'll look for on the first lap um the first chicane because it's a very tight chicane there really isn't enough space for two formula one cars to go through there side by side um so there will be carbon fiber flying there will be at least some form of an accident or rubbing or, you know, breaking a front wing or something uh, down into the first chicane. Um, so that'll be interesting. It won't be a boring start, I assure you. All right, talk to you guys later.